I actually had a plumber install this water spigot for me here. Hey, what's up YouTube? Co Reefing here. Just thought I'd make a video on how I get RO water here at my house. So as you guys can see, there's my tankless water heater. All my breakers are there on that left-hand side and my furnace is here. So this is in the basement. Here we go. You guys can probably see that a little bit better now that I zoomed out. So this is in my basement coming downstairs, just here off to the left. So I actually had a plumber install this water spigot for me here in the basement. And he, as you guys can see, he just tied into the water supply for my tankless water heater. And from there, you can see supply line goes into my sediment filter, which then goes into the carbon filter, which then goes into my RO membranes and my deionization filter. I did add a second RO and DI filter. It's like an add-on. Uh, if you buy this originally, it only comes with these uh, four on the left. And then those two on the right is an addition so that you get a little bit better water production. And I do use these brute trash cans as my water containers. So one of them is usually always full. I just turned it on. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's not that loud at all. So I like turning it on. And there's one really cool thing I wanted to show you guys. I want to say, nope, I'm not even going to pretend to know the name of the company that makes it. But if you Google the marriage saver, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it. But what that is, is this little box. And that little box is connected to this sensor, which is just held on to my bucket there via a magnet on the back. But what that does, whenever the water level gets to that sensor, it'll stop uh, pushing RO water through the supply line here, which I have. And there I have a really expensive pump. It's an actually an S2 return pump that I just connected to this hose. And that's how I fill up my ATO containers. I do have a smaller pump in there that I use for smaller transference of waters whenever I need to get water out of here into my other empty brute trash can to mix salt water for water changes. And I do have a short one here that I use to take RO water, put it into this container, and then uh, that's what I use that little pump for actually the green one there green and black I put that in my salt water mixing brute trash can and mix up my salt water and then I then take again my s2 pump because this as you guys can see is just attached to that so I just pop it out of this container and throw it in my salt water container and I pump it out to my uh, tanks. This is also another place where I like using these, these little smart switches. This one's for that green pump and this one here is actually for my, and that, I just use this little band that they have here to hold them up. Um, again, this is for my S2 pump. Let me just connect this here. And I need to put this up top actually so that it gives me space to connect this S2 pump. Once that S2 pump is connected, 
Um, hopefully it doesn't turn on and it didn't stay on because this is just leading to carpet at the moment. I don't know if you guys can hear, but it's getting pretty low. So let me do that and I'll get back with you guys. All right guys, so here you guys can see, I am filling up my ATO container again uh, via this hose that I dragged here from my RO water container, my brute trash can. Just wait until this gets filled up and then I'll use my phone to turn off that pump via that smart plug, like that one right there, um, inside of my inside of my mechanical area back there. All right, guys, so my ATO container is all full. Give you guys a quick look at the tank before I come back and clean it. It looks cloudy, but it's not really that cloudy actually because the glass just needs to be cleaned. I think I haven't cleaned it in like four days, but you're starting, you can see all of the uh, snail marks they try to clean it right they can't do uh they can't clean the entire glass but you can see their trail marks if i record that at an angle so yeah i also wanted to show you guys as you know i do have a 25 gallon peninsula water box upstairs and i do the exact same thing this hose um was a little bit longer, I cut it. I think I cut off like six feet, but that's just because it was too long to work for the 25 gallon upstairs. So since I filled up my ATO container downstairs and I still have a lot of RO water, probably half of that Brute trash can. Figured since I already have the hose and I've already have everything else connected, I will just bring this hose upstairs to fill up my 25 gallon. Sorry if there's a mess, I didn't even come upstairs to check to see whether or not it was messy up here but there to the left of my basement here you can see my office area which is kind of storage for now but that's where i have the 25 gallon cool guys i sorry i had to go downstairs and untangle the uh hose because it got a little tangled at the stairwell but again same ato container here for this water box 25 gallon which i think it's like halfway i don't know if you guys can see that but figured i'd just fill this up since i have everything out i also have some corals coming for the 80 gallon so you guys might see those in the next couple days. I think I'm gonna go pick them up at the fish store tomorrow. Here we are guys, just waiting for water to come. Oh, here it comes. There we go. The pressure is obviously going to be a lot stronger downstairs because the S2 pump only has to make the water travel horizontally, right? downstairs to my 80 gallon but here it has to go up that flight of stairs and still come back across into this ato container underneath my 25 gallon but it's still not that bad of a stream right since it's only half of the container i will sit here and hold it but i usually will just either pull the hose itself a little bit further 
I just got it to where I can reach and the water's still um, going at least straight into the ATO container right now. But um, I also have clips that would hold it here alongside this edge for me. Uh, the only thing with ATOs nowadays is that if you have like a smart one, right? Not a gravity fed one. You do have a little siphon, siphon break for the supply line on your ATO. And just a word of advice, you don't want the water level in your ATO container to go above that because it does need air to break that siphon once it pumps water up into your tank. And once uh, the sensor detects that it has reached the level that you want your, your water at, um, that water break, uh, you kind of need that to clear out any excess water between that siphon break and to where your actual container. Cool guys, so I'm back downstairs and I think I used like maybe a quarter of this entire brute trash can. I don't know how many gallons is this. I want to say it's like 40 but it could be less. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But one idea I had, because I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos on gravity fed ATOs, but those are super easy for systems that have sumps. And my all in one 80 gallon lagoon just so happens to not have a sump, right? So I was wondering if anybody out there has ever gravity fed an all-in-one since technically your sump is the rear chambers of your entire setup. I was thinking that maybe I could make a stand here of some sort, right? And have the actual RO water be over the height of this one. So it would sit from here to the top and then I would run a gravity fed ATO into my all-in-one and I would just then run it through these walls so it could lead over to my 80 gallon all-in-one but I mean I don't know it seems it seems like too much of a headache I think it's not that hard, obviously, as you guys can see, to refill my ATO containers via that S2 pump, and it takes me maybe five minutes. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, have you guys ever seen a gravity-fed ATO in an all-in-one without a sump, obviously? In this box, I do have a another power supply. I have come across no more outlets inside my cabinet. Just because I am running two heaters, actually no, I freed one up because I did put those two heaters via that um, Innovative Marine controller. So I think what did it was the extra Nero 5 and Nero 3 on this left hand side. Which, it's fine. I mean, I want more movement in the tank. Obviously, I only had that one Nero 5 on that right side, so. Uh, again, I got that same power supply where you can control the five outlets on the right via that top switch on the right. And the same for the ones on the far left. So, I might install the other one on this back right corner so that I can kind of divide up the plugs that are coming from the right side of the tank to that right power supply but I don't know yet for sure uh, what all I'm gonna divide and how I'm gonna divide it because I do like the idea of me being able to just turn off that right switch and it turns off all my pumps my ATO and my protein skimmer for when I do water changes or if I just need no movement in the tank right I just toggle that right switch on that one power supply so that's kind of nice i might leave everything there but i don't know i'll let you guys know um after i set that all up 
protein skimmer again. It's doing a pretty good job. Uh, there is some algae on this sand bed, but nothing crazy. I think it's still just me overfeeding, but I think it's fine for now. I don't know. So if you guys are ever interested, this is that like king snail that I got. If you want to buy one, buy them, but do not buy smaller snails. And the reason why is because what this guy is doing right now, I think he's eating that snail from the inside out. I'm not 100%, but a lot of these snails, Astrina snails that I have, are ending up on their backs. And this is the second or third time I catch him directly connected to one. So yeah, I think he's just eating them. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep him, I don't know. I did get these huge Mexican turbos and they're doing a great job. They're demolishing all the algae and everything. So that's pretty cool. One thing I am gonna do today is take this rock out of the tank because I don't know if you guys will be able to capture that, but boom, there is a Aptasia right next to my mushroom. So I am going to, I think just take that entire rock out and just scrape it off. Hopefully that helps. I don't know. We shall see before that um, Aptasia decides to take over the entirety of my tank. That's the only one that I see right now. So I am hoping that it stays that way. But I'm gonna feed these guys, clean the tank a little bit, and I will see you guys on the next one. Oh wait, let's count the, count the clownfish. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Cool. I still have 10 orange storms in the tank. They chase each other around, but I think it's because I'm about to feed them and I think they're ready to eat. So, cool reefing out. All right, guys, last thing for real this time. I wanted to show you guys how I keep my salt. And that is in this dog food container because it's airtight. I did buy one of those huge bags from Aquaforest, which I think I have one actually in this box. If I can show you guys. Maybe, maybe, yep. So anyway, you guys get the gist. It is, I think 200 gallons worth of salt that these bags create. But it's just once you open this bag, it's you, you lose the seal. It has a, what do you call it? Like a little Ziploc kind of thing on top, right? But it broke, it breaks. Uh, it's not a really good one. So once you open that, bag it's not airtight anymore and you don't want your salt to like clump up and get all nasty so what I decided to do is I opened one and I just threw it in here and to be honest it's been perfect like my salt is still super super soft it's not clumping whatsoever so yeah I think if you ever want to buy that big bag of aquaphorus sand or any, you know, big bag of sand, buy one of these containers and it'll keep it fresh for you. That bag, I wanna say costs significantly less than their other boxes or other containers of salt because of the fact that once you open it, you kinda have to have your own container, so. Yeah, buy the bigger bag. Get one of those containers and it'll be cheaper in the long run, trust me.